Okay, yeah. Okay. Once Kanish gives us the signal, I will get started and then I will hand it over to you. Should I start? Okay. So, good evening, everyone. Uh, I am Ritwich Kumar Sharma, Mobile Development Head from Developer Society of Bits Goa. And today we have with us Ali Mustafa and Omkar Agrawal, uh, community leaders from Postman, who will be the hosts for today's Postman Visualizer Workshop. So over to you, Ali. Thank you so much for the introduction. Um, hello, welcome everyone. Just give me a minute. I'll share my screen and let's get started. Uh, till then you can maybe you know mention in the chat, where are you folks from? Maybe Mumbai, Delhi, Pune. Let's see, uh, where are you folks coming from? Okay, um, I guess this looks good. Okay, uh, so I hope my screen is visible, right? Yes, it's visible. Okay, that looks good. So let's get started. Uh, my name is Ali Mustafa, and I'm the student community manager here at Postman. Uh, I manage the student community for India and APAC region. And you might have seen multiple uh, Postman programs like Postman Student Leader Program, Postman Student Expert Program, uh, you know, which uh, uh, the whole aim of the student programs is to promote API literacy among students and different universities. So if you're not yet part of the program, you can definitely join in and become a student expert. I'll share some insights at the end of uh, you know today's workshop, and then you'll move forward accordingly. So today's agenda is very, very simple. We start off by talking about APIs in Postman. Then we talk about a very important feature in Postman about visualizing, uh, visualization. So visualizing uh, the responses which you get from an API call. I will also talk about rendering HTML, adding styling, interaction, etc., and maybe using multiple templates like chart.js and you know other templates like d3.js, etc., and see how we can visualize uh, you know responses within Postman. So Postman Visualizer is uh, kind of a you know proprietary uh, feature of Postman which is not available elsewhere. And it enables uh, you to not just uh, kind of send a request and see the response in JSON or XML, but use that response to give more information to the end user. And uh, you know, I'll show you multiple use cases of how we use Visualizer to not just uh, you know, kind of show the response uh, you know, in a visual uh, format, but also make interactive trainings using the Visualizer feature so that uh, you know students like you can go ahead and start the training uh, with a you know self learning environment the workshop is divided into two parts there is a basic workshop and there is an advanced workshop don't worry we will cover both of them uh, in the duration of 90 minutes for the first 5 minutes i'll be covering around basics of visualization and apis and for the next 45 minutes we will have my colleague omkar agarwal who would uh, who is a student leader uh, who would kind of cover, uh, you know, advanced parts of collaborating with different templates and using external, uh, you know, kind of tools to visualize your data. So I'm there in the chat and let's see how many people we have. Okay, we have people from Mumbai, Jaipur, Chennai, Dehradun, okay, that is good. Um, okay, we, we seem to have diverse audience here and that is good. What about others? Others also want to add few things, maybe. I am myself from Mumbai. Omkar is also from Mumbai. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of Mumbai is in the audience, it seems. <laughs> um, oh, there is also Delhi. Okay, looks good. Jaipur, yeah, Jaipur is my favorite place. I would definitely visit sometime, probably. 
Bangalore. Bangalore is also a good place. Um, cool. We have our we have our office in Bangalore. So yeah, <laughs> let's get started. Um, you know, before I get started, I just want uh, a hint of what knowledge you already have. Okay, so that we all are on the same page as we move forward. Okay, so I'm my assumption is you all are familiar with Postman a bit. Okay, you know what Postman does. Um, and you know how API works in real life. Okay, you have uh, actually worked with API sometimes, or you know how API works uh, in a in a real world environment. Okay, though we will be covering a little bit of basics of API, but uh, that is my assumption. Uh, you know, as I start my talk. So if you're not familiar, just mention in the chat that you are a beginner and you would want more handholding in terms of understanding what an API is. And what Postman really does as a tool. Okay, I see more, uh, you know, answers. Jalgao, MP, Nagpur. I will have been to most of the places which you are mentioning, Chennai, but including like leaving Jaipur, I have been to all of the places. I guess, yeah, uh, before pandemic, obviously. Okay, so let's let's move ahead and let's talk about APIs. Okay, so. Uh, the basic idea of an API uh, is to have a client and a server, and then uh, you know interact between these clients and server and get you uh, you know get the user the best best experience. Whenever we talk about an API in a very very simple term, we talk about the example of a restaurant. Um, ideally, if you you know in a ideal world, if you go to a restaurant and you kind of sit there, the waiter will come uh, give you kind of the menu. You will select an item from the menu, give it to waiter, and then waiter goes to the back end, which is the kitchen, prepares, you know, the cook prepares your food, and then the waiter brings it back to your table. A very simple concept uh, explaining how APIs really work, uh, you know, in, in terms of a client server architecture, where we have client as you and server uh, or the back end as the kitchen and the network, the protocol as the waiter. Okay. So if I talk about this same example in terms of API terminology, we'll talk about a client, a server, and an API in between, which will help us to send data from the client to the server, and then server processes the data and replies back with some information. Is there any requisite knowledge of backend development? No. No, but we also assume you will, you, okay, yeah. Uh, that is not required, but yeah, the, one more assumption which we have is you should know JavaScript basics. Okay, the the whole point of using Visualizer, like the whole dependency, is that uh, you you need to know JavaScript because you'll be writing code in JavaScript. Okay, if you know basics of that, that is awesome. If you don't, we'll try to cover some concepts, but it is not you know if you know HTML and CSS, you are way ahead. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, okay. So apart from the restaurant example, what really is an API? When we talk about an API, what really is it? So when I talk about the definition of API application programming interfaces, the, the whole term, let's divide the whole term into two different parts. Application programming uh, interfaces. Let's remove interfaces, okay? And talk about interfaces a bit. So what are these interfaces when we talk about uh, you know interfaces in general? Are these our mobile phones? Are these our laptops? Is it a smartwatch? Is it uh, a kiosk machine at a McDonald's? Or is it uh, a ticket vending machine? You know at maybe uh, airport or railway station, etc. Or a metro. Okay. So when we talk about interfaces, these all items which I just mentioned can be interfaces, okay? So interface can be literally anything, okay? It can be anything. Uh, it can be, you know, there in the thin air. If you have watched Krish, you know what I'm talking about. But if you haven't, then don't watch it. <laughs> um, so interfaces can be anything, okay? Uh, it can be your devices. It can be any surface which can interact with the server. And, uh, you know, it gives you uh, ability to interact with the systems. Uh, on the back end, which are hosted way away from where you are actually kind of working. Okay. So what does API enable you to do? API enable these interfaces to collect data, send that to the server, process it, and bring it back. 
A simple example could be of an ATM. Okay. So ATM machines, uh, you, if you, as far as, you know, you have a Visa card or a MasterCard card or a Rupee card, you can withdraw money from any bank ATM. So just an example, my bank account is in SBI, but I don't find SBI ATM near my home. So I have, let's say, you know, Kotak Mahindra Bank ATM, or I have Canada Bank ATM near my home. So in that case, I can still go and remove my cash. How is that possible? Canada Bank doesn't have my account number. They don't know my bank balance. So how then, how can they kind of help me to remove my cash from my account, but with a different bank altogether? And all this is possible because of APIs, okay? So in an abstract world, if you see APIs play a very, very important role, and uh, you know you will see most of the companies going api first uh, you know to uh, kind of build the whole business model around apis so what are the types of apis which are available um, can i say that there is an api for everything oh yes i can so there is literally an api for everything you will see okay so there's a cat api if you don't like cats there's a dog api if you don't like dogs maybe tiger api okay and all these APIs enable you to get some information from the server. For example, Spotify, you can get, uh, you know, the songs and the title of the songs, playlist, uh, etc. And you can play a song via these APIs. Okay. Not just that you have, you, you use Google, you know, Google has multiple APIs. Whenever you hit a search query, it is calling tons of API on the backend just to make sure you get a response back when you are, you know, Googling something. Okay. So, we will talk about few APIs uh, in this workshop. You know, a few of them will be COVID APIs, normal APIs, and we will visualize these APIs acting Postman as an interface where we can interact with these APIs directly using the visualization feature, okay? Now, you might be wondering why do we really use APIs, right? Why could we make uh, one system and then that system is the front end, it's the back end. Why do we need API in the very first place? Okay, the whole idea of having an API, if, if I want to explain you in very simple terms, I would like to explain you like a Lego blocks. Okay. Okay, so in the chat, give me, uh, you know, how many people have ever played with Lego bricks? Uh, Lego bricks, you know, simple, you attach them, you build a kind of stuff on top of that, right? So how many of you have played with Lego bricks? Um, I played a lot when I was a kid. What about you folks? I hope it was pretty famous when you were kids as well. Uh, I still play with it. I'm not a kid, but yeah. <laughs> um, you know, the fun part about Legos is that you can attach them together and then remove specific parts and then you can transform that Lego, uh, you know, bricks to a whole different system. Okay. Let me see the chat and see how many people are there. I know there is some delay here. So plus one, okay. Plus plus, okay. Looks good. Uh, the favorite part of me was not building Lego blocks, but was destroying my little <laughs> blazers, you know, when I still do that, when they kind of build something, I go and, you know, just kick it out and they cry. And that is uh, not so good, but yeah, <laughs> better. Uh, so why we are talking about Lego blocks, okay? So when we talk about APIs, uh, the whole idea around APIs is that we are dividing the whole Lego bricks, uh, you know, the whole software, the whole architecture into multiple Lego bricks. And then we attach these Lego bricks to build our software, okay? So individual Lego bricks acts as an API. And at the end of the day, you have a software which is uh, kind of part of multiple APIs. Now, let's say you wanted to iterate on top of this system and you wanted to build one more feature, then you don't have to break the system which we have already made. You can actually make Lego and you can add on top of the existing system, which is already there. Okay. And that enables you to build software faster, ship it faster. And, you know, uh, 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 it, it, it kind of enables you to see uh, the whole world from a different perspective. Because now you can not just use this internally, but you can extend this functionality to external users. For example, sign in with Google, okay? So what it allows you to do, it not just allows Google to authenticate users, but also allows third party people, uh, which allows sign in with Google, 
very easily uh, you know add auto okay so they don't have to store passwords authentication will be handled by google they'll just store email ids and uh, you know a, a secret which they will be using to identify the users okay and it makes the whole process very very easy and that's how that is just one example i'm giving you about google auto there are so many different examples which you will see in day to day life where we use uh, these apis uh, in abundance now what is postman when i talk about postman postman is a collaborative api development platform it simplifies everything with a simple ui so you can uh, kind of go and uh, work with your api develop your apis test your apis work together as a team in a workspace and share the apis with the world so that they can uh, you know rebuild on top of these apis uh you know as i talk about postman it is used by uh, you know 98% of fortune 500 organizations and 65% of global 2000 organizations who use api uh, postman as their default you know api development platform so why do we use postman in the very first place that is the question ideally uh, you know uh, uh, like the whole reason why postman came into existence was because uh, earlier people used to use call commands and call commands were not that helpful it would not allow you to collaborate with others it would not allow you to store this information it would not allow you to see this information uh, you know uh, and kind of do some analytics on top of that or you know do some testing on top of that and it became very difficult uh, to kind of work with apis and that is the problem which postman solves uh that is not the only problem okay <laughs> that is one of the problems apart from that collaboration was a major hurdle how how does a team of five people collaborate together on making or working with the same apis uh, you know with the same keys etc cetera, etc cetera. and that is how postman was born and now it is a product which is used by 15 millions uh, you know 15 plus million developers uh, on a daily basis okay cool that's about postman so let's talk about how this api works in real life okay now uh, okay varun says i have stepped on them and almost died <laughs> okay varun that is something uh, crazy <laughs> hope you are uh, you know doing good now <laughs> okay um let's talk about responses and request okay so whenever you are sending uh, you know a, a request to an api it kind of sends a response So I'm going to fast forward the slides because I don't want to spend more time explaining what an API is because you already know that. So I'll just fast forward this and uh, you know start with the visualization part. So um, there's a client, there's a server. You send a request, and then the server kind of sends you back a response. Now the whole thing happens over a network or a protocol. Okay, it could be an HTTP protocol. It could be an HTTPS protocol. it could be a socket protocol okay or something else so it could be web socket it could be any any of the protocol which you are using to interact with the client and the server okay so your uh, we we you know when we talk about visualization we don't really care how the information comes back to us as far as it is an xml json or any other format which we support we can visualize that uh, using postman visualizer okay so when we talk about uh, postman a uh, very simple you know explanation of what things we see in postman uh, when we are sending a request okay the very first part is a method there are multiple types of method get post put delete each method has its own significance for example get method helps us to get information post method helps us to post information uh, or add information to the server put and patch update information and then delete for deleting information method is required whenever you are sending a request to a server okay by default it is a get method but if you do not mention the method like uh, if you do mention the method like post or put then it will consider that then comes the url the url is where uh, you know the main uh, end point is located so url is nothing but an end point okay so what do we call what, what do we uh, kind of you know use the end point for or uh, what exactly the endpoint is made up of so endpoint is made up of three things number 1 protocol http protocol https protocol or any other protocol which you are kind of trying to use 
second part is the host or the ip address or the domain name where you are sending this request to and then the third part is path it is nothing but where the resource is located okay just to show you a quick example i would go to postman and show you a quick example of how these requests kind of works okay you don't need to do this with me because this is more like a demonstration uh, than me kind of going and uh, you know doing a hands on with you folks uh, the whole workshop is a hands on so you know don't worry we will definitely have um, that part uh, real soon so let's say i am going ahead and i'm sending a request to www.google.com okay and i hit a send request as i send this request you will see that i receive a response and the response is nothing but a html web page okay so i can click on preview and once i click on preview i can see uh, you know the web page of google home page but the css is broken that is fine okay um, it, it does not really matter now if you go here you can see a tab called as visualize if you click on that right now you can see that we do not have anything here and it is just empty we'll talk about this later so let's click on preview now let me show you a very quick example of how i can add a quick query param and send something with my request so here i am adding a few param and i'm sending postman as the value and here you can see it automatically changed the url to this now hit a send request and let's see what i get in the response i get postman written inside the search box now earlier it was not written inside okay it was not there at all but why do why i don't get the search results page why i get this so for example if i go here and i search for postman uh, i get this page right but here if i do so why do i get this page and not this page can someone tell me i guess the search engine is the same the whole thing is the same why is it that at one place i'm able to get the search results okay but on the other hand i'm not able to get that and whatever i send here so let's say i just google google which is weird uh, <laughs> but if i do so i i see that it is written inside and it is not uh, kind of giving me the response uh, why is that a case can someone tell me no 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 it is a get request we don't need to use a push request uh, that is not something which i'm looking at what about others mm okay i'll i'll give you five more seconds before i tell you the answer yeah we are using we we only have to use the get request uh, actually you know google doesn't send a push request whenever you are searching for something it has to do something with the end point okay so I'll, i can give you the hint uh we are sending a query request okay priyansh okay yeah that is the answer priyansh so here we know that google.com is the end point but we did not specify the path here okay so if we specify the path search it should work let's see if it does it does yes so what does it say in simple terms it says that whenever you are querying an endpoint you make sure that the path is proper okay then the query uh, which is basically filtering uh, the search results from this query and then the method like get post put delete method okay so a few basics which are clear i hope this is pretty much clear exactly ashmit that was uh, the same right so if you go here and let's say if if i go and copy this and i paste it here i'll be able to see all uh, you know the request which kind of post uh, like you know 
Google Trends whenever I'm searching, uh, you know, for something. Like this is weird, but Google sends a lot of information while you are kind of searching for something. Okay, so you can actually paste the URL and see each item in key value pair and understand what is happening with the question. But yeah, that is not what we are uh, looking at. Okay, so let's go back to our presentation and uh, talk about the response. Okay, so when we talk about the response, uh, the response is basically where uh, you know. Oh, sorry, one one more thing which I forgot to tell you is about the body. Okay, the payload. So whenever you are sending a request, you actually mention the payload in the body. Whenever you are sending a post request, okay. So you mention the payload in body, raw, and then type of body which you are sending. Is it JSON? Is it HTML? Is it XML or a plain simple text? We're using a REST API, so we'll be using JSON majorly. Okay. Most of the times we'll be using JSON here. So one more thing: whenever you're sending a payload. Uh, you definitely you know need to go uh, it is majorly available in post and put request okay and the type of data is xml you know files graphql text uh, you know there are so many different types which you can kind of go and use we are using json json is a very simple key value pair which we'll be using for working with the apis then comes receiving response so receiving response is where you see this kind of coming in and the pretty version is the highlighted version with the syntax. The raw version is typically the raw data. Preview, if it is an HTML, it will give you a preview. And if you have written the script for visualization, it will visualize this response. Okay. Now, where will the script of visualization be there? Okay. So if you see here, whenever we are making the request, apart from body, there are two more things here pre-request script and test script, okay? So there are two more items here, pre-request and test. What does pre-request script does? This is the script which runs before even we make a request, okay? So before we call this endpoint, pre-request script runs, and then we call the endpoint, and then run the test, okay? So remember, First, we run the pre-request script, then we kind of, uh, you know, go to the endpoint, and then we run the test script. So this is the order of how the execution happens, okay? Whenever we are writing the visualization code, we will be usually writing that in the test tab, okay? Remember, visualization code, you don't have to write it on the server. You can actually write it here in the test, and it will, it will visualize for you, okay? If you go on the right hand side, you can see about sample test scripts which are present, which will give you an idea about you know different types of sample scripts which are there, uh, which you can uh, kind of use right there. Okay. Cool. So remember, all the visualization scripts will write it in the test tab. Okay. Moving back to the presentation. Okay. Apart from that, status codes. I hope you already know because you know the basics. I'm not going to go deeper there. Okay, so now let's talk about Postman Visualizer and what is the task of a visualizer? Postman Visualizer provides a programmable way to visualize you know, your request. So it will help you to visually represent what data is sent back from your request to the Postman client, okay? So what you can do uh, with Visualizer? You can actually add a script in the test tab and then once you get the data in the response, the test, the you know, the script which you have written, you actually get that data and visualize it in different formats. Okay, so I have shown you that uh, you know here, and you see the response here. You can see pretty, raw, preview, and visualize. Visualize is the feature which we are talking about right now. Okay, so that is about visualization. Okay, now why do you want to use visualization? Visualizer lets you present your response, uh, you know, in 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 a ways where it makes sense right away. So you don't want to build an HTML page. You don't want to kind of make a you know full fledged application out of it. You want to do something very quickly, and in that case, visualization is uh, the go to tool because it can help you visualize everything within Postman, and then all of your team or even uh, you know public workspaces have the same ability 
So people can reproduce that and see it right there uh, in Postman without actually writing an HTML page and rendering the JSON which you are getting. Okay. So visualization eradicates that part and helps you to do that right away. Okay. So you don't have to kind of uh, you know go and make uh, uh, all together a different server and do all that stuff when you can use visualization right away within Postman. So why do we why do you want to uh, kind of visualize uh, the data you know, like which you are getting back from the server? Okay. The basic idea here is uh, you know uh, the the very fundamental thing is it is very easy. Because there are already a lot of pre-built charts and graphs which you can utilize. So you don't have to utilize, you don't have to write a lot of code to consume these APIs. Okay. And it is very easy to share. So let's say someone who's not familiar with coding can also visualize the responses which you have coded in. So if you share the collection with them, they just run the request, click on visualize, and boom, uh, they see the data like it is it is more like a website. Okay. The second part is saving time. Okay. So here you can use from Postman Networks API template, which are already available, or you can go and use chart, uh, you know, uh, chart.js or d3.js or other, uh, you know, kind of services, which you can uh, kind of use a template of. You can use Bootstrap to kind of create custom CSS and, uh, you know, you can literally do everything out there. And if there is something which is not supported, you can make it a CDN and uh, you can uh, kind of use that as well. Omkar is going to cover a few parts uh, upon that. Okay. So that is about it. Uh, you know, easy, save time, customizable. It's not just about uh, writing the code which is already there, but you can actually bring in your own code and make it more powerful, uh, you know, as you move forward. Okay. Cool. Apart from that, remember we are using HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript here. And uh, that is what we are uh, kind of, uh, you know, kind of using to make visualizations. So uh, you can, uh, you know, if you know about HTML, CSS, and JS, then uh, you will be able to do hands-on with me. But if you don't know about that, then you will be able to just uh, kind of see me do it. And then probably later on, you can learn more about them and uh, can, uh, you know, get your hands dirty uh, with uh, visualization. Okay. So let's go. Uh, again, as I told you, uh, you know, these are the tools which you require. Uh, you know, these are the technologies which are supported. So chart.js, bootstrap, uh, you know, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, which, which is by default supported. Now, what are the types of visualization which you can do? You can do bar graph, you can do table, you can do heat map. You can actually plot a complete map on top of that and any other visualizations which a third party provides, which you can uh, kind of do within Postman Visualizer. So you don't have any restrictions. You can go in and you do. You can do any type of visualization which you wish to. Now, uh, before we talk about this, uh, there are three simple steps of how you can build your own visualizations. Step number one: create an API that can fetch the data you want. Okay. So uh, let's say if I want to use the COVID API, I need to find or I need to build a COVID API in the very first place. Uh, fortunately. We have a lot of COVID APIs which are already available, okay, which you can use without authorization. And Omkar is going to cover a few parts uh, from the COVID API and see how you can visualize that. So the very first part is to zero down on the API which you want to visualize. The second part is to write an HTML uh, script and you know HTML CSS script uh, which will enable you to visualize this data, okay. And then the third part is to bind this data from the API response to the visualizer using the variables which are available. Okay. So uh, before we move forward to hands-on, uh, two more things which you need to, imp you know, these are the important concepts which you need to understand. The first one is PM visualizer.set method. This is the method which accepts a handlebar template. And the second parameter is the data. So it accepts a template and a data and then plots that uh, into, uh, you know, di displaying your visualization. So whenever you see this method, this is the method which is actually visualizing your response and your template which you are written. What is a handlebar? Okay. Handlebars are very simple. They are a template. Okay. And these templates uh, are, uh, you know, very, very simple. 
uh, if you have ever worked with Jinja or configuration files, you would be familiar with it. Okay. So it is a very simple template. Uh, there are multiple methods which which are provided. If you do not know about that, you can actually go to uh, handlebar JS and you can uh, kind of you know click on get started and learn more about handlebars. Okay. They are very simple, uh, you know, more like a template which you can use. And uh, Postman by default supports handlebars, which you can use uh, to work with visualizations. And we are going to see some loops there, uh, which will help us to navigate through and uh, use this handlebars in the visualization process. Okay. Cool. Uh, that's about all the theory which I wanted to cover. Let's uh, get our hands dirty using the practical. So I'm going to send this link uh, in the chat right now. Uh, so that everyone can see it. Uh, can you please send us on the chat? That would be better. Sure. Okay. So once you are here, uh, you you will see that this is a workspace. Okay. So this is a public workspace which you can uh, you know see, and here you can see you can comment here. Uh, you can you know see different versions uh, which are okay. I guess we have a request here, so I'll merge it probably afterwards. Um, and then uh, you can see your multiple folks which are created, etc. So workspace enables collaborativeness between people. And this is the public workspace which we are going to use. So what you need to do is you need to go to fork button. Click on fork button. And create a fork copy of this workspace. OK. So go there, click on fork button. I am repeating this again. It will open Postman Visualization API 101. Go here. Inside that, click on this fork button and it will open a window like this. Okay. Now, for the fork label, you can enter any label. I usually prefer the date just to distinguish between different versions. Okay. So, 13 August. And the workspace, you will by default see your workspace, which is my workspace. Okay. You can either watch the original collection, which I don't want to because it is my own collection. Uh, but if you watch the collection, if there are any changes, you will be notified. OK, so once you do that, click on fourth collection. I'll wait a minute so that everyone is on the same page and I'll directly send the fourth link in the chat so that people can fork it. Remember, you need a Postman account to work through this. OK, if you do not have a Postman account, you can create it right away. I'll wait for a minute. Once you are done, give me a thumbs up and I'll click on for collection. Okay. If you want me to repeat it once again, I will do that as well. So yeah, tell me, uh, you know, once you're done uh, so that I can move forward. Let me check the chat. Okay, once you're done, give me a thumbs up so that we can continue, okay? Because I'm waiting for your feedback so that I can fork this collection. Make sure for label, you can enter anything. I'm entering the date, which just helps us to dis uh, you know distinguish from the uh, main parent uh, so that we can have a look at it. I've sent you this URL again. So yeah, waiting for your response. I hope the links I have sent are visible, right? Uh, I cannot chat. see them in the chat. I don't know why, but uh, are you able to see them in the chat? Because I'm checking my second device and it is not visible there. Umka, can you see it? No, not even you. I can't see. I think you. Uh, it has uh, the link is not allowed to be pasted in the chat. Uh, um, the YouTube chat. Moderators can do that, I guess. So, host, can you please do that? Yes, please give us a minute. Okay, no problem. Don't worry, folks. We will cover everything. So, yeah, that is not a problem. I'm pasting the links once again so that 
you know in case people are not seeing it we can still post it uh, we also have a short link you know bit.ly postman dash viz which is uh, kind of uh, i cannot directly put on because i'm not a mod there let me see if i can do so um bit.ly Okay, I've shared the link. Um, Hello, Kanish, are you there? Uh, if you could put the link. Okay, there we go. Okay, the links are visible. Uh, looks good. Cool. Um, so I'll give you a minute. I just click on pour, add a label, and then uh, click on pour collection. Until then, I will explain this. So there are two folders. There's basics and there's advanced. I'll be covering the basic one, and Omkar will be covering the advanced one. Here you can see there are three requests here inside. And the basic one, we have one simple request. I'll also be able to see the number of folks increase as you folks are kind of forking it. <laughs> so yeah. So you do not need an API key. You don't need anything. Uh, all the APIs which you're using is free APIs and they don't need API keys. So I can see six forks here. So yeah, um, till now, okay, we have seven. I'll do one more so that we can, I can also make a four. So 13 August and I'll do that in my workspace and then I'll click on fork collection. Waiting for everyone to fork it. Once you click on fork, it will automatically refresh the screen and redirect you uh, to your, you know, personal workspace. For me, it is very much, you know, messy. So you can see I have so many collections uh, because I work a lot on Postman. So I'll put a star so that it is on the top so that I don't have to navigate on the bottom every single time. Okay. So once you have done the forking part, uh, we will start. Just give me a thumbs up once you're done. done okay assuming that you folks are on the same page let me get started so go to basics and uh, click on simple table here you can see we are using a url which is called as postman echo.com okay i see a thumbs up from low rohit looks good okay so here we are doing a very simple request from uh, you know postman echo.com what postman echo does whatever you send it to postman echo it will echo it back. So it is more like going on a mountain and saying, postman, postman, postman. And then it will return back, postman, postman, postman. OK, <laughs> so yeah, uh, swim like that, uh, you know, postman echo request. So click on body, click on raw, and here, click on JSON. OK, so we are sending a post request because we don't have an API right now, right? So how can I show you? Uh, we will definitely do that in the advanced part. But right now, consider that I don't have any API. So how, how am I going to show you, uh, you know, uh, how, how the visualization work? So we are going to demo some API, okay? We are going to create a demo, uh, you know, version of the data and see how it goes, okay? 
So again, repeating the steps, go to body, click on draw, drop down, click on JSON. Okay. So here, what are we going to do? Here we are going to generate a random a data. So let me create a JSON and it is going to be called as contacts. Okay. And in that I'm going to have multiple individual JSONs. Okay. So the very first one, let me use name and then um, I can use, uh, let's say a variable. So random full name, then I'm going to add email and then I'm going to use random email. Okay. So this is one array. I need to add multiple arrays here, right? So uh, I need to make sure that I add more arrays. So in that case, I'll have to add a box bracket here and then end that box bracket here. Okay, so what I did, I just copy pasted this and I enclosed the whole thing in a box, box bracket. The reason why uh, for doing so was I have multiple JSON, right? So I cannot just keep them adding. So here I'm taking example of two JSON, very, very simple name, two elements. Okay, very, very simple name and email and they both are random. Now, can someone tell me what, what will this do? A random full name and random email. Well, what will these variables do? It's very simple. Uh, the name itself tells you what that will do. <laughs> but yeah, still waiting for your response. It will generate random emails and random names that we can have mock data, okay, for our API. So let's hit send and see what it returns. So if we hit send, it will echo back the same thing which you sent it. Can you see that? Exactly. Rocker that rocks. Oh, okay. <laughs> that is a good name. <laughs> okay. So if you resend this, you, you will see that the name will change and the email will change every single time uh, you hit a send button. Okay. Because it is randomly generated and they are not real persons and real names, uh, which we can use. Okay. So what we did, we added a simple body with some simple data. Okay. For people who are not able to follow along or make this JSON, I'm sharing this uh, via our REPL profile. So just give me a moment. I'll create a new file there because I did not create a JSON file there. Um, basic, and I will add a new file with data dot JSON, and I'll paste it here. Uh, Control S. Okay, so I have this, uh, you know, file which I can share with you. So the complete code is available on REPL.IT. Uh, we have created uh, another repository which will give you the complete code. So let me send that your way right away. Uh, here it is. Okay. Oh. Uh, no, this is breakpoints. Okay. Open data.json file. Okay. And do not run this open data.json file and copy paste the data, which is kind of available. Okay. Looks good. Uh, coming back to the visualization part. Cool. I have also sent the JSON file to you. So if you are not able to do so, we are here. Can someone tell me where should I write the request uh, for visualization? Should it be in pre-request script or should it be in test? Come on, be quick, folks. Very easy to answer this question. Where should that be? 
should it be in pre request script or in the test script mm -hmm. where is ripple uh, yeah ripple link is if you go here uh, in the collection click on this three dots and click on view documentation where is the view documentation here and here you can see the ripple link is posted here i have also set that in the chat okay yeah it will be in the test tab okay so yeah click here click on test and let's start writing the code the very first thing you need to write is an html template where you will visualize this table into okay so we need uh, we need to create a table and for that we are going to use simple html and css okay so the very first thing is we need to write the html template okay so we are going to create a table and inside that we are going to have two uh, headers and then we are going to have multiple rows okay so that will be uh, you know the main part of our complete header so if you want to see the code you can go to visualizer and click on index.html within basics okay yeah uh, repl.id you know the code is also visible here in the documentation as i have told you you can go to documentation and the code is still visible there so you know uh, sorry the url is still visible there so you don't really need to go there like you can still you know do that with this part as well okay so here you can see let me explain the code very quickly we have created a very simple table using the table tag we have given it a class to add css later on okay and tr table row table heading name and email because we have two data there okay then we are using a handler okay so this part is a handler what are we doing in this handler we are telling that from the response data take contacts okay and from this contacts what you do is you extract the name and the email and create a new table data for individual names and individual emails okay here you can see that we are dynamically also generating the id which is the key okay where we are mentioning the id so that uh, you know we can generate multiple rows very very easily and the whole thing is enclosed inside each okay so consider this as a for each so if there are 10 elements it will run 10 times if there are 11 elements it will run 11 times unless and until that whole data is completed can you use a for loop yes can you use a while loop yes okay uh how did how will this each work like is there a specific syntax for that yes how you will uh, kind of learn about that handler dot js okay so handlebar uh, handlebar dot js not handler dot js so, so it is called as handlers right but yeah the name is handlebars dot js so you can go here and you can see multiple references here i have mentioned only one reference uh, which we are using inside the visualization okay now the second part is pm.visualizer set and then one part is template and then the other part is what the other part is the response which we are getting from the request which we are sending so you get this response from pm.response.json And that is how you get the response so copy this complete code control a control c and paste it in the test tab okay you remember that we have mentioned the template here but we have not defined the template we have only wrote html here so we need to define a template here so make a new variable template equal to add quote 
बैक कोट एंड इट विल कन्वर्ट इट सेल्फ टू ब्लू कलर कैन आई नॉट राइट कोड हियर यू कैन बट यू नो आई डोंट रियली लाइक दिस कोड एडिटर so i use repl to write it or write the code or you can use vs code or you can use any other you know uh, like coding engine which you wish to uh, ide which you wish to uh, to write this code okay so now what we did we added a variable template and then inside that we added backslash here and backslash there so that the whole thing is inside the template and now you can see there is no error because the template is passed and the response is passed so let us go and hit send can one visualize can you see this so in the visualize we were able to successfully visualize the name and the email right how about we add two more names and two more emails so that it looks more good right than this so let's go to the body and let us uh copy paste paste okay it uh, looks good uh save this and then hit send again and now you can see four names and four email ids looks good so we created a simple visualization with a border one but does that solve our problem no we need css as well so let's write css okay so again go to test where are you going to write css can someone tell me you should by now figure out where should i write css come on folks be quick mhm mm now So we are going to write CSS inside the template here. But how am I going to write that? Like, uh, what should I use to write the CSS? Simple, basic HTML CSS. I am testing you on your HTML CSS stuff. So yeah, tell me. Style tag, perfect, perfect. Style, okay. So we are going to use style tag both uh, here and there. So style type equal to text slash oops css and then we are going to close this style tag so that we can write style in between okay so this looks good uh, apart from that we need to write the styles here okay um, i'm not going to waste my time writing the whole code because i have already given you here in style.css copy the complete code control a control c and paste it here in the style save it hit send and tell me what do you see do you see a much better table with a much better visualization if yes you have successfully done this part okay and that almost ends our basic workshop almost because i have one more thing to show you or one more task to give you so yeah <laughs> come on folks don't be lazy it's not even you know uh, it's 7 o'clock right now so yeah <laughs> were you able to do this if not just copy paste okay let me do one thing let me add the complete code here so uh, let me add a file complete dot uh, js and inside this file i'm going to add the complete code uh, so that you know for people who are not able to follow along with me they at least are able to copy paste the complete code and get the response at least so control s so complete dot js has the complete code uh in case you are not able to add it add that to the test and you are all good okay oh yes 
Cool, amazing. Can someone add one more column here? What will it take to add one more column? Yeah, I know it's 10 second delayed, right? So that is something which um, I also know that. So yeah. Uh, it is sometimes like that is something which is by YouTube only, so we cannot do anything there. But yeah, um, can someone add one more column there? Folks, be quick. If yes, what, what changes you need to make in body? Yeah, additional TH, exactly. Yes. Apart from that, you need to make changes in the body as well, right? Because you're not getting three columns as a back. You're only getting two columns. So let's say we add, uh, you know, one more column. And we name it, let's say, address. And here we mention random street address. Okay, copy paste this real quickly. Here, what I will have to change, I'll have to add one more TD. And I'll name it uh, address. And in the TH, I'll have to add one more TH. I'll name it address should be fine and we are good yeah new key value pair which is one more object in the same array and we are all good looks good Amazing. So that's from my side. I'll come back to the presentation and hand it over uh, to part two, which are advanced concepts where you use a real world API and not a demo API, which we use right now, like, a, you know, Postman Echo, like you will use some real world API and also learn more about how to use Bootstrap or D3.js or Chart.js to make amazing, uh, you know, uh, like, uh, visualizations and not just what I sh I have shown you like a table. Okay, so uh, Omkar, are you there? Yes. So, uh, okay. I'll share my screen or sure, Omkar, go ahead and share your screen. Till then, folks, remember to join the Discord server. The Discord server is basically, uh, you know, what will enable you to kind of get a role for yourself and ask us later on, like, uh, you know, any doubts which you might have. So I'm sharing the link right now in the chat. Um, so you can go and join the Discord server um, and get a role for yourself and ask your questions there after the workshop. Okay. So I've shared the link in the chat. People can go and join in. So, is it visible now? Omkar, your screen is visible, but you have shared the complete screen. So, uh, your presenter view is also visible. Let me switch. Window. Just let me know if it's visible. Yeah, visible properly. Go ahead. Okay, great. So, hello everyone. I'm Omkar Agrat, and I'll be today. I'll be talking about advanced concepts. So. You can find me on uh, GitHub and LinkedIn where my username of Karagrava. And uh, let's get started. So you 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 don't have to do anything new. 
you just have to continue with your previous post, uh, previous collection. So let me follow along and uh, let's, uh, I'll start, uh, we'll start it. So here is our collection and I'll be talking, I'll be using the advanced folder here. So go to, go to using chart.js first, we'll first uh, start using chart.js. And uh, as you can see, this is, uh, this also is a Postman Echo uh, URL and uh, with a post body and the body contains some data that is, uh, some country codes and uh, some related data to it. So again, this will be uh, using us uh, Postman Echo and the next one uh, from the next time, from the next request, we'll be using a real API. So for this one, we'll be using uh, the same mock data here. But uh, the thing for this is that we'll be using a new uh, a chart of JS to represent our data. So how to do that chart of JS? Just go to the URL that we had shared and click on chartview.html. There I have pasted the whole code. So we'll not uh, go with the whole code. I'll show you how to do that. So the first thing uh, to use the visualizer is to set the template. So I'll set a template uh, and for any, any type of visualization, you have to uh, use the same method. So I'll just show you how to do it. Uh, it's similar to what uh, Andy told us. So let um, I'll name it HTML equals to a string that will have backward picks. And then uh, what uh, we have to do is pm.visualizer.set. And the first parameter is the template that we want uh, to be passed. And second will be the data that we want to be passed, right? So for the data, what we'll do is uh, I I just uh, uh, you just have to pass your data from uh, this uh, that uh, Postman visualizer uh, Postman Echo URL will be sending, and you have to use that here. So I'll tell you how to use that. In the meantime, what we'll do is we'll use response and pm dot response dot json. Inside JSON, we uh, have dot data. Okay, so this will be our data. Uh, uh, we, will, uh, we will use for the visualization. And pm dot response dot JSON is the is by default. Uh, it means that it will parse the response that it has received into the JSON format. And from the data that is passed, uh, uh, that is passed using this dot JSON method, that will uh, from that data will uh, we have to take dot with dot data, and that dot data will contain this uh, uh, this code. So I think there is. Uh, so what you, what you have to do is you have to copy this data, uh, the key data that we have, copy it. Just copy and you have to paste it here in the body. So you have to paste it here in the body and uh, that will be <laughs> that will be it. So after this, what you have to do is you have to save the request. Uh, parameters that okay. Uh, so let me know if you, ha you have completed up until now. I just fork my own collection here into my public workspace and import collection.
advanced using the chat.js and in the body it is here and the in the test i'll just write it again HTTP ml just to backward text and pm dot visualizer dot set will be html and here i'll pass my data here so it will be response and pm dot response dot json dot data all right so i'll save this and so now for the html again uh, so now we have to use something called as chart.js so if you see uh, you have you can get a cdn at uh, cdnps.com and search for chart chart.js we'll see this chart.js here just click on it and if you click on this web on this link here it will take you to the chart.js part where uh, you can learn more about it how to use it and particular syntax related to it so i'll not go deep into chart uh, chart.js and its syntax and how to use it but i'll uh, walk you through on uh, how it can help us with the visualization of our data so here we'll be uh, doing a uh, will be drawing uh, bar charts here with uh, for the mock data that we have set so to do that uh, what you have to do is you can just copy this so the first thing that we'll need in our html is this canvas into which it will uh, draw the chart for us so chart.js requires a canvas element and not a div so you have to make a canvas element here so i am assuming this as my default code editor so you can use whatever you have so i would recommend vs code if you have or else you can continue with the repl.it side and this this will be our first thing that will add to our html here i'll go to a new line i'll paste it here and here is my canvas that uh, that our chart.js will use by default and then to work upon chart.js we have to add it as a cdn so adding it as a cdn is also easy uh, you can go to cdnjs.com and copy the chart.min.js and copy the script tag here and paste it here So after pasting it, uh, this adds chart.js uh, into our uh, Postman visualization. So it is as simple as this, as adding a CDN.js. Or else, what you can do is you can go to actually go to this uh, to the URL and then and just copy this and then paste it into uh, into this. Uh, into the test tab here but uh, that is not very tidy way to do uh, do things so we'll add a cdn for it and after adding cdn what is the important part is the main uh, actual js that we'll write so while using handlebar you need to know that you can't directly type uh, uh, type js into it so it, it it is almost like an html so you have to add a script tag here uh, into which you'll write your JS code. So you'll write script tags here in which you'll add your JS code. So for JS code, uh, you have to skip this part. So our data is already coming from uh, our API uh, from here. So we don't have to do that. Right? So, so for using chart.js, the first thing is that we have to get the context of the uh, context of the uh, canvas that you are using. So if you haven't worked with canvas uh, tag before, then uh, know that uh, for canvas is a special element in HTML. So it, 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 it is used to draw dynamic things. So canvas has something called as context to it. So in the, when you switch from HTML to JavaScript, you can uh, draw things into canvas using this uh, using the context that HTML provides. 
So for that, you have to paste this, uh, this code here. So it says, uh, it creates a variable called CTX and that will be document.getElementById and my chart, my chart here. So ID is my chart is given to the canvas and it will uh, take out the context of, uh, take the context of the canvas here. After which what we have to do here is you can see, uh, this is a syntax of chart.js where it says create a new chart with the context given as CTX here. And then we have set some uh, parameters here to customize our uh, visualization. So what this is, sorry, excuse me. <coughs> so it says it, it is of type bar. So we are drawing a bar chart here. And data is uh, data has uh, labels here, so it will use labels to draw the bars that we have that we require, and it uses data sets to use for actual data that you have to draw. So here I have added some comments here, so you will know uh, you will understand what it does. So after which, uh, what we have to do is we have to add background colors to each of the bar that we have. So here you can see I have added uh, five colors here for five data points that we will that we will have. So we have five background colors for each of them, and for this is for the data part. So this is every this describes everything about the data to the chart.js. Then what? Uh, then to customize the actual chart, we have options. So we have to set options. So for setting options, the first thing is the legend, and we don't know if we don't want to display legends, we can do legend and display false, and it will not show any legends here. Then we have to go to title and display true and count. So this will be the title for for the entire chart. Then comes to x axis and y axis. So to set the x axis and y axis, uh, in the options we have to define a scales. So inside scales we have to define x axis, and x axis is an array of object that uh, you have to set. So it will be uh, we have we are using the same thing for each and every data point we have. So we we just need to add one single uh, object here. So which is display true, that means uh, we have to display x axis to uh, x axis on our chart. So if you don't want to display x axis on your chart and just want to display y axis, you can set this to false and it will not show you any x axis. Then since we have uh, we we are telling it to show our uh, show us the x axis, we are giving scale label. So what label we have to give to x axis that will so we have to show the label that's why display true for scale label and then label string will be items so for the x axis it will have labels of items right and similarly we have we are doing it for y axis okay so this is the code for adding for the chart so i'll i'll just copy this here Just copy this. This. And I'll paste it here. So what we did first, we added the canvas into which we'll display our chart, and given it height of seventy-five, and then we added a CDN uh, to to the chart.js. Our visualization can use chart.js into it. And then we are continuing with our script uh, using which we'll set the chart. So here we have set, uh, here we have added the context to the canvas. Here we are setting the options for the chart that we are, that we want to draw. So after that, what we have to do is we have to get the data, all right? So how do we get the data into Postman? So <laughs> as previously, it's uh, getting data into JS is not as simple as getting it into the handlebars like previously you did with uh, each year, uh, like each. And it is not that simple for getting data into JS. 
so po postman has given us a feature where, where it takes the task to get you the data and all you have to do is you have to use this pm dot get data method and pass it a, a callback and this callback will be uh, will have a error value so the first uh, parameter will be the error and the second parameter will be the value that it gets right so after getting the value what it, what we have to do is we have to go to my chart that uh, we have drawn uh, this one let me scroll this thing so this is a chart into js so that we, uh, we are use we are calling a chart and into chart we are using data and data sets and zero so the first data sets that will be used we are setting that thing so into a data data set zero what that will be is that it will be this one the first element and its dot data value will be value dot data that we get from here after which what we do is we set the labels so again my chart dot data dot labels and that will be value dot labels then what we do is my chart dot update so if we don't do my chart dot update it will not show anything and it will be a blank chart with x axis x axis and y axis but nothing else not even the plotting and not even the labels so to update uh, to tell that uh, uh, to tell the chart dot js that i have now given you data so please update our visualization uh, you have we have to use my chart dot update okay so i uh, just copy this this uh, code into here So after copying this, uh, what we'll do is we'll just remove this dot data from here because we are accessing dot data here everywhere, right? So we don't have to do that here, but uh, complete till here, and I'll tell you what to do, how to move forward. So please let me know your, when you are you have completed up till here. Guys, please let me know when you have finished till here. Okay, so done. So after which, what you have to do is uh, we have completed with the code now here. So now let's see if there are some errors here into our. So the first thing I'll do is I'll save it. I'll save the request here and I'll send it. And I'll go to visualize it. So as you can see, it says undefined here. So what is the issue now? 
and how to uh, how to uh, uh, see that what the issue is so a simple thing here that you can do is if you are in uh, postman for desktop then uh, just uh, click f12 and it will uh, go to here so i'll just share my postman for Dex uh, desktop and you, i'll show you how to do how to see what error we are getting here so i'll just show you give me a second i'll switch to I'll just switch my screen here and uh, stop presenting and uh, if you are into your postman uh, application postman for desktop application you will have a screen something like this advanced and it is chart.js and here you can see i'll just send it again and undefined so if i right click here you can see inspect visualization so if you are into postman uh, for desktop application so you can directly go into uh, into inspect elements and you will get your similar uh, chrome like dev tools here to debug your code i'll just add adjust it Hey Omkar, uh, the window is separate, I guess. So it is not visible if you have shared only the window. You might need to share the desktop because we are not able to see the debugging part. Is it visible now? Better. Yeah. So what you can do is you can see, uh, you can look here and uh, debug your code what the issue is so here it says undefined so uh, the all the the uh, the reason here can be uh, we have to set the data here so it, it is not receiving proper data so what we'll do is i'll just try removing this so as i previously told you that we are already access accessing the data here so we don't have to do that uh, that thing here so I'll just remove this. I'll save it. Save my request and click on send again. And I'll do a console log here. Console log value. Again, save it and click on send and go on visualization and see here so this is what the data is actually receiving so it says inside uh, for the for the data that it is receiving it says response and inside response it has many things so inside response it has finally it finally has a data which has two things to it data and labels right so we have to change our code according to this format that we are receiving so what we'll do is we'll already set dot response here and i'll again save it to see the changes and inside response don't have anything so let me see Send it again. Value dot response. I'll do. I'll try that. I'll again send it. And now we are getting data here. So what? Uh, what I have to do here now is I'll have to set it as. Um, value which equals to value dot response right value dot response dot data because as you can see here 
inside after getting dot value that is a data field here uh, into which we have our actual data and labels so what i'll do is i'll set it here as value is equals to value dot response dot data and again save my request and click on send and here you can see our our visualization is uh, completed and uh, here here is the plotting and below is the x axis and here is the y axis here so if you have completed up till here please let me know or if there are any doubts still here you can uh, ask it uh, regarding uh, the updating the code here because it was something that i wanted you to see how to debug your visualization so if there are any any doubts or you can still ask me or we'll move forward so i think there is no no more doubts yeah so th that's uh, that's the work of chart.js for you so you don't have to literally write any css for particularly for charts and it will draw you a clean beautiful chart for you so got the chart okay so great so now i'll move forward to the second thing i'll just close my visualizer here and go to uh, okay so we were here i'll just close this request here or else i'll just continue with uh, this thing the next the next thing that we'll do is we'll go to with covid 19 data so it is an actual data and here is the uh, api to it it is hosted on uh, heroku so for the actual uh, api link that that you can see it is there in the uh, query parameters here so in case if you need some real time data you have to uh, you can always set the url as this one and uh, instead of this mock url so post this is a mock server another feature another feature of postman so i have used your mock server to display mock data since uh, since the uh, many requests at a single time can uh, stop our server that is hosted on heroku so i have used your mock data and i'll just click on send and see here so so you can see here yeah, there are there is a lot of data and it 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 is uh, really uh, we can't read make sense out of data very soon so so now we'll go to visualization for it again in the test script uh, there is default thing that we have to do that html equals to double question npm dot visualizer dot set there will pass html and here is our data here so go to rebel dot it and then go to covid cards dot html go to covidcast.html inside the build.id and here you will see all the code written to you so since we doing we are writing the script in text tag so a test tab so will add a, a test here that says your status code should be 200 and uh, so our template here will be 
I'll just name it to HTML. At HTML equals to this. Now into inside this, you don't actually have to add HTML and head tag here because Postman vis uh, visualization by default uses um, by default inserts some head tag HTML and head tag. So you don't have to do that here. You just have to add the script here. So again, we'll be adding it via CDN. So the first script that will add is jQuery. So in this, I'll show you how to use Bootstrap into for your visualization. So for by default, uh, dependency for Bootstrap is jQuery. So you have to add jQuery here. Then uh, you have to add Bootstrap here again. You you can copy the script tag from the uh, CDNJS. I just already have it here, so I will not go and search there. I just copy the CDN link here for both of them. And again, this is some default styles that we'll uh, add. I'll just copy it again. And the style here says that body should have font size of 12, background should be of triple E and padding should be 16 uh, pixels. And uh, there is some uh, custom CSS for dot card, dot card topper, dot card topper again, and dot flag. So this this is some custom CSS that we have written. After which we have to write body. And inside body, the first thing comes is a div. So again, I will not explain you. Uh, how to write bootstrap and how to use its class. I assume that you know it. So we, we are starting with a div. And now this here comes the handlebars. So what is with here? So you see, uh, you can see that we, we are writing something into handlebars. Whenever there is double uh, brackets here, that is double curly braces here. So whenever that happens, we know uh, you you should uh, come to know that uh, we are going into the handlebar world. Handlebars world here. So into the handlebars, what we are saying is that with response dot data, with response dot data, what you have to do is you have to write this HTML into the uh, visualizer, right? So if you and if you know uh, with in the JavaScript, it is similar to that. So, so here you can see it says pagi, uh, pagination meta dot current page. So where does this come? This comes from response dot data inside response dot data dot pagination pagination meta dot current page. So to skip all of that, we can use this uh, with block here, and I'll just stop it again with block and. Uh, with writing a width, we, we have to close it. So here we are closing it. And inside this, we have to write a row. So this is again our HTML here. Uh, copy it for now. I'll uh, I'll tell you what is there inside the HTML. So inside HTML again. If you see, what we are doing is we are giving, uh, we are uh, writing an H4 that says showing page and with in bold that is in uh, in in bold we are writing that pagination meta dot current page. So whenever uh, you see double curly brackets, you have to understand that it goes into handlebars world or else it is HTML. So here we said handlebars to answer, insert the data with uh, response dot data. Inside response dot data, there is pagination meta dot current page, and that value we have to write it here. Similar with total pages, here with current page size, that is the number of items and the total records that are there. And the last update that uh, that the data has been has been updated, right? And here with we will close our width. So whenever you see this, uh, remember that it is 
handle bars that you are using and inside handle bars you can use a javascript with in this way so again uh, if you see your um, data here you can see there is data then there comes rows which contains uh, actual data for each country that we have so that was us this is china and this is italy so for every country we have some data here that is there inside rows here rows right so as you uh, as you see response dot data which is this response dot data inside response dot data pagination matter dot current page so pagination matter dot current page current page size total pages and total record so we are using those data here and again with response dot data inside response dot data we are iterating over rows so whenever you see an each block here this is an each block so it, it iterates over the data it, uh, so here here we have an array so it iterates over this array and inside array we are setting uh, again we are writing some html code again we are writing some html code i just close my vs code here so uh, we again we are writing some html code with country and uh, some other data so i'll just copy this code uh, without explaining it further and here we go inside the script tag below this what we have to do is we are going to have to paste it and close the tab here i'll save it again and i'll click on send and go on visualize inspect visualization and here we haven't received any <laughs> okay so the problem here is that we haven't added any data to um, to the html here so what we'll do is we'll add response and pm dot response dot json right uh, let me see if there is anything else so there is nothing else so we'll just add it here so this was missing from our code that's why the visualize tab was empty so i'll save it again i'll click on send and here you can see there are <coughs> there is um, visualization but it is unclear so how to how to make it clear and why does this happen so if you go to inspect visualization you can see that your data is written here directly inside head and style here is already added and inside body the script tag right so what you have to do is you again have to it is not compulsory but sometime visual uh, yeah, uh, postman visualizer has some restrictions so it it can do it that's why we add an html at the top and the uh, bottom here so we'll just add that html again i'll just copy this into the body so as i i have shown you that uh, adding html uh, html head and body tag is not required but as uh, bootstrap sometimes makes issues so just to clear those issues we, uh, we have to do this and it was up until script time i just paste it save it and click on send okay so script tag i just try it here
okay so there is there are some csp issues that uh, that is there so i'll just have to check the css here okay leave it so content development is all about css and there are some css issues with our um, uh with our code so i'll just clear uh, clear those css issues uh, but uh, if you go full screen here uh, the flag is set and uh, the data here is uh, you can see the data with each country's name above uh, the flag below it and the active cases and its data new cases and its data all right so you can all uh, this is a way to use bootstrap into your code here you can see it shows showing pages 1 of 21 which shows 10 data out for all the 203 records and the last updated date is not there with us so that's why it's empty here there is no last updated uh, update date so that's why there this visualization is empty but uh, you know, but you can see that uh, it shows cards for each of the country and this is how you do it in uh, using bootstrap into the postman of visualization so uh, let so just copy the code from repel.it for now and you can you can later understand how bootstrap works if you don't know or else you will it is easy for you to understand and uh, easy for you to work upon and push so using bootstrap into postman visualization improves its features there is another thing that we have i have to show you but uh, uh, but we'll continue so first finish till here and let me know when you have completed it guys please let me know when you have completed it or if you have any questions on how to use uh, how did we use bootstrap into our visualization Okay, so Priyansh Vyas has done. Ashmita is also has also completed. So okay, so now the next thing that we'll do is a little bit advanced stuff. So uh, please listen carefully to this. And uh, uh, this one is again a. Uh, I have used a mock server here, but uh, I I'll add a add the link here. Okay, I'll add the link to the real API here. Okay, so now we'll see how to add your own custom scripting that uh, that cannot be added by a Postman visualizer. So if let's say if you have some problem adding your own code into the test tab here, but it is important for your visualization to run. then how to do it i'll show you now so for this we have a news api here so which is forward slash hacker news forward slash top so we will get top hacker news from this api this is again a mock server i'll add a add a, the the link to the real api here afterwards after the workshop so up until then we'll work with a mock server here 
so again this this is some uh, test script that we are adding just to make sure that we are getting proper response so you go to test add here so it says status 200 it says response should be json and it says the re, uh, the json response should be actually an array so this this is some testing that we, we are doing to the api then what we are doing is we are already adding so we'll just write this uh, test here and click on send and here you can see in the response uh, in the body here in the pretty tab you can see it says uh, it gives a list of numbers and these are all article ids from of hacker news so how to work with this now uh, Right, so it requires a lot of custom scripting so that we can uh, actually fetch the news and display it. So I'll show you how to do it. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll add, we'll use the data here and we'll save it to a variable called post IDs. That will be this IDs, which uh, each, each ID is, uh, is uh, related to a post in, on the new uh, website so we'll map over it and after, uh, what we'll do is map, after map mapping it over we'll replace the original data with with the url right so if if we are i write now console.log of post ids and again i'll click on send and if I see on console here, um, you can see that it's, it shows uh, an array of 500 elements with each of them being a URL. So <laughs> this is actually an uh, API from given from Hacker News for free. So where you can use <laughs> each of this ID and get, and get the actual post of it. So whenever you enter this ID instead of this one, so you'll get a JSON response from it. So we'll map that and I'll just delete this console log. Now again, HTML. So here I'll just uh, give some spaces here to make, it, make some things clear. So the first thing we are adding is Tailwind CSS. So instead of Step now we'll be using Tailwind CSS and same with Tailwind dark.min.js. Here we are using Axios. So you can use Fetch API if you want. And if you know how to use Fetch API of JavaScript, you can always use that. But uh, I prefer doing it using Axios. So I'm using an Axios library here. And again, I'm using a cutter library here, which truncates data as per your requirement. So it is also a library that you can use. So I'm adding a CDN to it. So these are some of the libraries that will require. So I'll just add, copy them and paste it here. So get HTML equals to a big string. And inside here, I'll paste this code here. After which it's again us. Um, it it what we do is we create a division. Inside a division, we again have a div which says contents, which will be our actual content here. So whatever our news article will be, that will be inside this division. And this is just a loader division which shows a loader icon whenever we are loading more data into it. So this is for all the HTML that we, ha we have to write for now. So I'll just again copy it. So usually during web development, what you would do is you would just add a script tag here to the JS file that you have here. And it will, uh, it will include that JS, uh, the, that JS file when you open the HTML. 
but inside Postman Visualizer, you cannot open a JS file like this, right? So first we'll see what is there in the uh, in the JS file. So I'll just uh, uh, first copy this pm .visualizer .set to set the data again, right? So now what we'll do is we'll go go and see what JS actually is. So <clears throat> These are some variables to be used, which is the data that is actual data, the current page that we are on. So it uses a page pagination, but uh, it it loads new pages on uh, on when you scroll below. So it's like lazy loading. So uh, for that we are using current page and the current article that we are on, the loader element, the article container, and the total pages. So when uh, so this is the first function that we'll use, and it is a toggle loader. So whenever you call this function, it will toggle the loader to hidden or to uh, un uh, to unhidden uh, to the unhidden. Uh, you will just add a class hidden or remove that class uh, hidden to unhide the loader. Then here we are adding an event listener on scroll. So whenever there is 80% scroll onto the screen and there is just 200 pixels left, so it will load more data into it using this load data news uh, function that we have built here. So what this load news does is it first thing that it does is it toggles the loader. So it activates the loader here and we are using try catch and finally block here. So in the try catch block, what we are doing is we are getting some more news and we are setting th that to the template here. So this is some advanced scripting that you don't to know. I'm just explaining you the code and how it works. I'll show you how to do it, how to add this code here. So here you can see uh, we are uh, here. I was so we load into the template here using this. And uh, this is a catch block to catch any errors if we have. And the finally block will again uh, uh, hide the uh, loader uh, icon that uh, we are using here. So inside the get news, what it does is it uses um, Axios here. And Axios, after using Axios, it loads all the data and it returns the list here, which will be set in response and then given to the visualizer. Here. Into this template, what we are doing is we are using a for loop, and inside for loop, we are adding a news article here, which again uses this backward ticks. So, so we can't add this script because we are already using backward ticks. So, if you use backward ticks inside backward ticks in JavaScript, it will give you error because it assumes that your template is closed here, so it will give you error. That's why don't use that here. We can't use that JavaScript here. So I'll explain you JavaScript. So it adds this. This is an HTML for the news article, right? It is an HTML for the news article, which will be added using the data. So here, you know, I'm using a for loop to iterate over the data. So it iterates over the data and sets, uh, adds this template to the to the division here you can see it adds a division append child as new div and this uh, the the cutter that uh, library that we have added it truncates the data so here we truncate the data here for the news articles and here we call the pm dot get data so this is an important part pm dot get data because inside javascript you will uh, you'll you are not able to direct get the value. So you have to call the PM dot get data here. Okay, so this is our JavaScript code, right? And, and uh, we can't add the JavaScript code here because we are using template strings here and we can't use template strings inside template strings. So our solution to this is you can just copy this code and add it as a guest here. So if you go to github uh, guest.github.com, you can add your guest here. 
so i'll just name it a uh, template i'll just uh, name it as postman visualizer dot js and add the code here and create a secret guest here and i'll just uh, make it open i guess it's closed okay so i'll just show you my another uh, my original code that i have written so here you can see this is the original cdn that i'm using here so you can get that link here just uh, uh, click on this copy shareable link and copy it right after you copy that code just a second i think yes this is just paste it here okay so what you have to do is uh, click on this and click on embed and copy this script tag but you cannot add the script tag directly so what we'll do is we'll just use this url to add it to a cdn right dot js file here copy this url and if you press enter you can see that it it uh, writes it gets your js code here but instead of doing that what we have to do is we have to use we have to add a cdn right it is not a cdn dim so what you have to do is you have to go to this link that is https cdn dot statically dot io you have to just go to that link here you visit the website here and here you can see it shows that server open source files quickly so click on use convert here to easily convert links and then what you can do is you can easily add this script here just add this link here and it will fetch you a url here so after fetching a url you will get something a url something like this if you don't want to do it you just uh, copy this cdn that i have already done just copy this link here use this link if you don't want to do it for yourself and just copy this link here and paste it here so this is a shortcut way to use a custom javascript file that you have developed you uh, and add it to postman visualizer if there are some issues and postman visualizer doesn't allow you to add that code so you can always uh, 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 post it on github and use that link and add a, add a cdn to using cdn.statically.io and it will give provide you as a cdn and you can add that script here so now when i click on send and go on visualize as you can see it loads the data for me so it is in night mode it loads the data for me and here you can see it shows me likes the comments and uh, the topic here the name and if you click if you are on web and you click on learn more here and so it will redirect control plus click here so you as you can see it redirects you to the website here 
talagang to consent. And this loads all the news data. And if you scroll, you can see that my uh, scroll bar is going up automatically. That is because it loads some new data for me as and when I scroll it. So that is because of uh, because of the script tag. And inside script, I have this on uh, on scroll event listener. So it updates every time after I scroll a certain amount of time. So for every new page, I have added a, a line here. So that is how you do it using a custom script. So I'll just switch back to the presentation. And uh, here is my presentation. And I'll hand it over to Ali. So Ali, please take it, uh, continue. Thank you so much, Omkar. Uh, just give me a moment and I'll share my screen. Um, I guess it was really helpful for you to kind of go ahead and uh, share about the advanced part. I hope attendees uh, found it very, very helpful uh, in terms of kind of going and creating visualizations as you uh, kind of wish to. So just give me a moment and I'll share my screen and then we are good. Um, here goes the window and here goes the screen. Okay. So uh, as a next step, you can continue the learning and become a Postman student expert. Postman student experts uh, is a training which is kind of self-made and it's completely on, uh, you know, but it's completely made using the visualization feature and that will give you a lot of inspiration. So yeah, but uh, student training does not test you on visualization skills because the whole idea of becoming a student expert is to uh, kind of gain basics of uh, you know api as the very first knowledge and then uh, you know you can move forward to learn more uh, in the near future so postman student expert training you can go and apply and become an expert very very easy uh, this is the url do mention that you came from this workshop while you apply i'm going to send this url in the chat right now so that you folks can go and apply uh, and become a student expert remember we also have a student leader program where uh, you know students who are very active in the campus and want to host events, uh, you know they can become the part of student leader program and host APS centric events, workshops, and hackathons. And we will, as a postman, support you in your journey. So if you're from a different college and you want to become a student leader, you can apply. But the prerequisite for becoming a student leader is that you should be a postman student expert. So yeah, please apply, and uh, you know I, I wish you luck uh, to kind of complete the training and uh, you know um, uh, like become a student leader now it uh, talks about swags so before we end the session we are almost at the end of the session but we still would want to give a people who waited till the end some swags so let me open the chat on my other device and see how many people we have in the chat we still have few people in the chat so that is good um so we have swags for not all of you but few of you so how, how can you earn the swag? It is very simple. Whatever you learn today, take screenshots in between. Uh, mention, uh, you know, summarize the whole thing which you learned via Omkar's session, via my session, and post it on either LinkedIn or either Twitter using hashtag postman student. Okay. And we will pick up the best, uh, you know, top two posts and give them swags, top two to three posts and give them swags. Uh, so yeah. So go ahead and share your learnings using hashtag postman student. Remember to summarize the session properly. And then, uh, you know, we will uh, kind of go and see the hashtags and give you the swags. You don't necessarily need to tag us or postman. We just need to summarize the session and use hashtag postman student. So thank you so much uh, for coming in. There are more resources. Uh, I fear we will not be able to take uh, more questions right now because we are almost overshoot the time. So if you have any questions, we have already mentioned on the Discord server and you can join that and ask questions there. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you for coming in and hoping to get some really good summaries of the session on Twitter and LinkedIn. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, have a great day. I'll hand over the session 
to the host uh, and uh, you know take a leave thank you ali thank you omkar that that was a great session and i am sure our viewers have learned a lot today and thank you to our viewers as well for staying up till the end so that's all from our side and i wish you all a good night thank you bye bye bye